Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, I caught myself a Growlithe and I'm still super excited about that capture. Not only did I need a fire type Pokemon, but Growlithe is simply a badass. In this episode, I'm going to be focusing on Celadon City, pointing out important things along the way. There's a lot to cover in this episode, so it's going to be really information heavy. Hopefully you guys will learn a thing or two along the way. I know every time I come here there's something that I either didn't know or I forgot, so it's always a good learning experience. First up, Pokemon Center, everyone saw this in the previous episode, not much to it, so we'll just skip over it for now. Uh, if we come over here though, this is the Pokemon Mansion. It doesn't look like much of a mansion, but hey, I didn't name it. If we come over in this first room, there's an old lady, and after talking to her, she will give us some tea. Uh, she'll tell us that this tea is really good for quenching thirst, and it really is the best. But you know what, old lady? I had some hot tea before recording this episode, and I burnt my fucking tongue. So fuck you. Fuck you. No, I'm kidding. Give me a kiss. Mwah. And as you probably remember, uh, there were a couple guards that were blocking the main entrances to Celadon City, and they were claiming that they were too thirsty, so they wouldn't let us go by. Kind of a douchebag move, you ask me. But now that if we go back, we can give them the tea, they'll let us go through. Uh, it's a good shortcut, alternative route, instead of having to go through the rock tunnel. So if we ever want to go back to Cerulean City or Vermilion City, now we can. Uh, if we come over here, it's an empty room. A couple nice couches. Some very nice couches, actually. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. There's another one down here, too. Um, this is actually the Game Freak meeting room, believe it or not. Uh, for those of you that remember, Game Freak is actually the design company that helped make Pokemon. And, uh... Believe it or not, they actually put themselves within the game? I don't know if this is a douchebag move or an awesome move. I mean, if I was part of the design team, I probably would put myself in the game too. I probably wouldn't make it as obvious as this. I'd probably make it so you have to like do something ridiculous, like punch this tree a hundred times and then punch this tree three times and then like a secret room would open up and you get like a Pokeball as a reward or something lame like that. Anyways, if we come up to the roof, there's not too much up here. There might be a hidden item or two. Uh, I don't really know for sure. If you have the item finder, you might as well whip it out. That's what she said. And take a look, but uh, unfortunately I don't. Um, if we look over here, there is another little room that we can't seem to get to. Uh, those of you that have played Pokemon before obviously know how to get to this building. For those of you that don't, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to get there. It's actually really easy. As you can see, there's stairs back there. I get up there, but how do we get to the stairs? Hmm, quite a conundrum. If we hop on our bike, I'll show you the way. Up here, left, up, left, and down into the back door. Do you like the back door? I know I do. Anyways, if we make our way up these stairs, we'll get to the top, and in this room, there are two things going on. First of which is this guy who claims he knows everything about Pokemon. Uh, he's written some tips on the blackboard. If you're still having problems with the game mechanics at this point, it wouldn't hurt to check them out. Uh, I, feel, I don't feel the need to do so, so I'm just going to skip over it. Most important in this room is this free Eevee, which is just laying around, which is kind of weird. Eevee is a really interesting Pokemon. It's known, it's known as the evolution Pokemon, and that it has more than a couple evolutions. Uh, the first three of which are based on which elemental stone you give it. So there's like the fire stone, the leaf stone, the water stone. Uh, in gold and silver, they introduced uh, Umbreon and Espeon, which are the evolutions of Eevee based on if you level up during the day or night. Um, as you probably have noticed, there is only day in this version. So if you want to get those Pokemon, you either have to trade it to uh, Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, I know in Diamond and Pearl there's also Leafeon and Glaceon, and those are evolutions based on uh, certain map triggers that you have to find. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to be using Eevee in this Let's Play, uh, just because I I've already decided not to use free Pokemon. I have to catch them myself. But if you need like a fire type Pokemon or a water type Pokemon or even an electric type Pokemon for that matter at this point, uh, Eevee is a great option just because you can evolve it pretty much right away. Hint, hint. Um, next up, the Celadon department store. This place is huge. It's a glorified Pokemart. There's a lot to buy here. Uh, I'm going to go through each floor, point out the important things, and uh, hopefully I'll pick up some interesting items along the way. First up, this guy is selling some TMs. Some of them are pretty useful, some of them are not. Uh, Roar, Hyper Beam, Dig, Brick Break, Secret Power, and Attract. Uh, I'm not going to buy any of these just because I still have Dig and Brick Break, and those are the only ones I'm really interested in at this point. 
Uh, if you need a couple new moves to spice up your Pokemon team, by all means, go ahead and buy them. They're not that expensive. And they can add pretty good variety. Especially Dig and Brick Break. Uh, I'm just going to buy some Great Balls because I'm running a little bit low. And then we'll continue on to the third floor. Um, what to do here? Oh, yes, okay. If you talk to this guy here, he'll offer to train Counter to one of your Pokemon. Uh, counter is an interesting move in that it does damage based on whether an opponent uses a physical attack before you. I never really use it. Uh, it might be useful for some other people. It doesn't suit my playstyle. I'd rather get the first hit and kill the Pokemon before it gets a chance to attack me. But that's just me. Uh, come down here. This is probably the most important NPC in this whole building. Um, this poor person sells the Evolution Stones, the ones that I mentioned before with Eevee. Other Pokemon that evolve using these stones are Growlithe, so I'm going to pick up a Firestone. Um, what else? I know Pikachu, if you have one at this point, you can evolve it using a Thunderstone. Uh, Waterstone, if you have a Poliwhirl, you can pick one of those up. Uh, Leafstone, Glooms, and uh, Weeping Bells use these to level up. An important thing to note is that a lot of the Pokemon that evolve using Evolution Stones, they will stop learning moves altogether when you do level them up. Um, so it's kind of a toss-up if you want to evolve your Pokemon right away, or let them gain a few moves. Uh, a good example of this is Growlithe. Uh, Growlithe learns Flame Wheel at 31, I think, and then Flamethrower at 39. Uh, if you do evolve with Arcanine, it will not learn these moves. Fortunately, there is a way to learn Flamethrower using a technical machine, so I'm going to go ahead and use a Firestone and evolve my Growlithe, even though we just got it. Do, do, do. Ricky, are you ready? Here we go. And as you can see, it's really easy. You just apply the item to the Pokemon, and voila, it's going to evolve. And we will get... An Arcanine. How badass is that? It's like a lion, it's got a little bit of a zebra with the stripes going on there. It's pretty much the whole shebang. Uh, Gloom is another one of these Pokemon that can evolve, I mentioned before. Um, fortunately, its evolution Vileplume um, continues to learn moves, um, especially the one that I'm most interested in, which is Petal Dance. Uh, they both learn it at level 44, which is unusual. Usually evolved Pokemon learn moves a little bit later than the unevolved forms. So I'm just going to go ahead and evolve Gloom. And we get a Vileplume. How creepy is that? Back to the big, beady red eyes. And just like that, my team has gotten a lot stronger. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I could probably pick up a couple other elemental stones, just in case I catch a couple Pokemon in the future. Um, but I'll probably just hold off until now. Or well, until then, when I do catch those Pokemon. Uh, if we come up here, we talk to this person. They actually sell vitamins for boosting your Pokemon's stats. Uh, the way this is done is that uh, Pokemon have individual values, which is just based on like random generator. And they also have effort values, which is based on which Pokemon they've defeated in the field. So certain Pokemon will get um, give effort values for like speed, and that'll boost your uh, Pokemon's speed as they level up. Uh, this way you can artificially boost it. If you're really intent on being like having the most hardcore team, you know, perfect stats, this is the way you want to do it. Uh, unless you can, you know, preparation, do a lot of planning, figure out which Pokemon you want to fight to get those effort values. I'm going to skip on that just because I don't think it's necessary just playing against the, the NPCs and whatnot. But in competitive battle, I would totally definitely recommend it. Definitely recommend it. Uh, this person down here, um, battle items, nothing too important. I'm just going to skip on that. And on the next level, I think this is the last one. Yes, yes it is. If we come over here and talk to this pink haired girl, if she'll stop. She'll say that she's thirsty and she wants something to drink. Uh, fortunately, how fortunate is that? There's a couple of vending machines here, so I'm going to pick up some fresh water, some soda pop, and some lemonade. Uh, you can use these as like potions for your Pokemon. Um, they're kind of expensive, so I kind of wouldn't recommend it at this point. But if you give her each of these drinks, she will give us a TM in exchange. Uh, the first of which is Light Screen, which weakens you know the power of special attacks. Pretty useful. Um, Next one, if we give her Soda Pop, she will give us TM20, which is Safeguard, which uh, reduces, or prevents, sorry, the status problems among your Pokemon. So, you know, your Pokemon can't be put to sleep, can't be poisoned. Uh, pretty useful. I'm not going to use it. Probably not going to use any of these, actually. 
Uh, next up, TM33, which is Reflect, which reduces the uh, attack power of physical attacks of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, normally, these moves are learned only by Mr. Mime in this game, I think. But uh, yeah, that's an option. If you want to use a, like a stalling team, those TMs are pretty useful. I'm not going to use them just because, like I've said before in numerous times, it doesn't fit my playstyle. But just like that, we're done in the Celadon department store. So if we can continue down this way. Yeah, as you can see, this is the Pokemon Gym. We're not going to go to it just yet. Um, probably in the next episode or two. But if we come over here, we can't cross that. Oh, here we go. If we come in here, this is also known as the Game Corner. Which is pretty much the casino of the Pokemon world. Um, they have a lot of slot machines. Unfortunately, we don't have a coin case, so we can't play just yet. Listen to that music, so awesome. But fortunately, I do know where to get a coin case, so if you'll follow me. Put on my bike as well. Come down here, I'm going to this restaurant. That's right, folks, an actual restaurant. The only restaurant in the Pokemon world. If we come over and talk to this fat, lazy man over here, he'll say that he's flat out busted, wasted all his money of the slots, and he'll give us the coin case in exchange. So now that we have that, let's go back to the game corner. Or, actually, let's go over here. Might as well, since we're here. If we come in here, we can see that Team Rocket has taken over this building. And it almost seems like they're in charge of Game Corner? What? What's going on? I don't understand. Anyways, let's go back to Game Corner and check it out. Um, since we don't have any coins to start out, you can either talk to a couple of the people. Um, some of them will give you a couple coins out of sympathy, out of pity. But if you actually like check around the ground, you should be able to find some, just like this. And now we can go and play on the slots. If you talk to this woman, she'll mention that machines have different odds. Apparently, I don't know how this was figured out, but this machine here has the best odds. So we're going to go ahead and play. Um, it's just like any slot machine. For those of you that haven't played before, this is how it is. If you line up these symbols, you'll get the reward that it says. Uh, you can either bet one, two, or three coins. And you just push the button to stop the reel. Ah, oh, so close. I'm actually really bad at this. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably off-screen myself getting a lot of coins. Just because coins are pretty important. Um, they don't have any monetary value. But if we come over to this building on the side. Over here. We can exchange our coins for some fabulous prizes. Uh, the first of which are uh, held held items by Pokemon that can be used in battles and whatnot. Um, smoke Ball makes it so that you can run away from enemy Pokemon a lot more easy, easier. Miracle Seed boosts the uh, Grass type moves. Charcoal boosts the damage of Fire type moves. And Mystic Water, surprise surprise, boosts the damage of Water type moves. Uh, Yellow Flute, I don't really know what this does. I think it can be used as an item to get rid of Confusion or something like that. Not too useful. Don't waste your coins on that. Uh, most important, if you talk to this person, you can actually exchange coins for some really rare Pokemon. Uh, mainly Dratini, Scyther, and even Porygon. Uh, I think in the Leaf Green version, there's a Pinsir instead of Scyther, and I think there's something else instead of Clefairy, but don't hold me to it. Also in the Leaf Green version, I don't know why this is the case, but uh, it actually takes fewer coins to get the Pokemon. I think it's because they figure most people are going to be playing Fire Red, because, I mean, Fire Red is just more awesome, and they need something to reward those that pick Leaf Green. But that's just my idea. Now, if you come over here, there is a guy that will sell us uh, technical machines, some of which are really, really good. Um, there's Ice Beam, Iron Tail, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Flamethrower. I really want Flamethrower. I don't have the coins, though, so I'm going to do it off-screen and pick this up probably for the next episode but these are all really good moves and they add a great variety to your team and uh, yeah I would highly recommend picking up a couple of them especially if you're lacking a certain type of move um, if we come over here it looks like a team rocket guard what's going on maybe he wants to fight let's uh, switch some Pokemon in get Ricky some experience points hey you what are you doing he's guarding a poster Hmm, that's not suspicious at all. Maybe Team Rocket is behind Game Corner. Let's find out, folks. First up, Raticate. Typical Team Rocket Pokemon. Let's see what Ricky can do now that she's fully evolved. Uh, let's use Bite. I think it's super effective against normal type. I might be wrong, though. Yeah, I am wrong. And that's not doing a whole lot. 
scary face. That's not very scary at all. What does it do? Lowers my speed by two levels. Okay. That's, uh, that's a pretty good move. Let's see if we can take this out. Oh, no. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. At least Ricky's pretty like, bulky. Taking hits pretty well. Even though, like, underleveled, stats are pretty good since it is a fully evolved Pokemon. And. Well, that wasn't very good. I was expecting more. Let's see if the Zubat will get more. So, yeah, if I teach Flamethrower to Ricky. It's like a 90 base power attack, which is like one of the best fire type moves out there. And I can replace it with Ember, which is like a 40 base power attack. It should make Ricky so much stronger. And I won't have to resort to using Bite like this. Oh, that's getting close. Nice. Easy win. Easy win. And just like that, Team Rocket Crunk goes down. And. Oh, Team Rocket Hideout. Where is he going? Where did he go? Why was he guarding this poster? We'll find out next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. My name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy.